Cook, isn't it wonderful that Lauren Jackson's here for the Oceana Series? They haven't changed the starting lineup from New Zealand, and why would you with all the Olympians that are present in there? And we've got such deep talent coming off the bench. Francis Tolo coming back from playing in Europe. It's just an exciting time for the Opals. A bit of rebuilding happening, so I think the girls will just be ready and raring to go tonight. And how about the Tall Ferns? Much less preparations than the Australian side. They've got a young side, but a few familiar faces for Australians. There's certainly a lot of WBL players in the starting five. Cox, Emerson, Warburton and Lockwood are all uh, playing the WBL. They are very young. They have some 17 and 18 year olds in this team. So this is a big learning curve for them, but they look well competitive Wednesday night, so they'll want to do that again this evening. Yeah, well, they did have a big task ahead. New Zealand win the to win by 17 points or more to such that not snatch that sole qualification spot. It is time for tip off here at the IS Arena. So thank you very much, Rach. It's time to hand it over to our commentators, Darren Boyd and Narelle Fletcher for tip off. Thank you very much, Stephanie Branson, Rachel Spawn, Narelle. Isn't it great to be here? There's such a great atmosphere in this building. Darren. This building is always loud. It's always very vocal for the home team. So the Boomers and the Opals are going to reap the benefits of that. But what a better way to spend Sunday afternoon than four hours of basketball. Absolutely right. And we're expecting a fascinating encounter, not just in this game, but a little bit later on when the Boomers and the Tall, backs, tall Blacks do play. But we're hoping the Opals might put on a little bit of a show. Their match on Wednesday night went to script. They shook off the rust, and now they might be able to have a bit more of a statement here in front of a passionate home crowd at Lauren Jackson's home, the AIS Arena, as Lauren jumps it up and wins convincingly the tip ahead of New Zealand's Tony Edmondson. And Natalie Hurst, who's won six championships as a Canberra Capital, returns home this season, not just to play for Australia at Narelle, but also to play for the Capitals in the WNBL later in the year. And look, we've seen her absolutely light this court up, light the, light the crowd up as well. So really looking forward to seeing what she brings to the floor today as well. Early turnover from the Opals, something they will obviously want to avoid against a determined New Zealand side. This is Tony Edmondson. She top scored for them on Wednesday night with 18. Hunter. Inside to Warburton. Lovely cut from Michaela Cox and excellent offense for the Kiwis. Look, that is exactly the start they will want to do. They will want to try and exploit inside the big girls of the, of the Opals. Try and draw some fouls early, but they need to get off to a good start. Only one player above 190 centimetres, New Zealand. They're a very small side, and they don't have anybody who is able to match Lauren Jackson. Well, look, you can see even in that low, low post position there, she's just head and shoulders above her direct opponent. That is the challenge for, for the New Zealand team out there. Yeah, Casey Lockwood, who takes this pass, is the tallest on court at the moment for New Zealand at 185. Jackson stands 195. Lockwood tries to go with the athletic move. She coughs it up. Hodges got it to Hurst. Now back to Snell. New Zealand ball. Hunter. The only member of this New Zealand starting five who doesn't play in the Australian National League. Michaela Cox does. She was part of the Townsville side that went all the way to the grand final of the WNBL last March. And she starts brilliantly. She's got all New Zealand's five points. Look, she's familiar with this court, these surroundings. As we see once again, just the domination of Lauren Jackson inside, grabbing that offensive rebound, making the two go to the basket for the bonus. Physical presence is significant, isn't it, Narelle? <laughs> As we see Brendan Joyce, the new coach of the Opals, well known, I'm sure, to most Australian, if not all Australian basketball fans. Brendan Joyce is a championship winning coach in the Men's National League with the Wollongong Hawks, as well as being a, a coach of the Blaze and been around the league as a player and a, and a coach for a long, long time as Jackson brings scores level. Well, she's coming off the being top scorer on Wednesday night and she's, she's opened the account with all points for the Opals right now. I caught up with um, Marie and Gary Jackson before the game down in Rome. We're trying to work out the last time Lauren actually played in an Oceana series because as we know, she's been in the WNBA and it's not normally available for this. So it's just fantastic to see her out here in this game and, and it just gives so much reassurance to her teammates that they have such a superstar out there with them as well. well Gary and Marie, have they got their names on their seats, Rach? I think they, they, they sit in the same seats every time they come to the AOS Arena. I think they might have to uh, name them for Lauren's parents <laughs> who are sitting courtside as they always do. They're great supporters of hers. 
They certainly are, and um, and they actually said that you know Lauren was nervous uh, playing Wednesday night because, as we know, she's been out so long with that hamstring injury. And I said, well, it's good to know that someone who's so mentally tough gets nervous. She is human, and uh, means she's still so passionate about the game. It's also really nice for us as as viewers of this match to know that she's got that one game out of the way. She's got rid of those nerves. She'll feel good from that game, and she can really relax and get out there today. She's short on that effort. New Zealand come up with the ball. This is Edmondson. Two minutes have gone in the opening quarter here. Five points each. Hunter again. Looking inside to Lockwood. Smaller opponent. Jackson comes across to help. Now, this is what they wanted. They wanted to open up the path for a three-point shot. And Edmondson, surprisingly, it has to be said, connects with it. But down the other end, Jackson's unstoppable. Look, it's one thing to make the open baskets at one end, Darren, but you also have to get some defensive stops at the other end because eventually that height, that inside presence, that physicality will wear you down. And, of course, we, we talk about Jackson and the fact that she has not played since the London Olympics. She hasn't played for a competitive match since the London Olympics. So, what's that, just over a year now. This is Lockwood. Got to go up here. She's not quite Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with that skyhook attempt. Hurst always likes to push the tempo. Jackson has the three-point range, decides to give it up to her co-captain, Jenny Screen, who is a brilliant three-point shot, can't get that one to go. The block out by Lockwood inside, though. Not enough offensive presence on the board there, though, from the Opals. And then Laura Hodges going for that board. Geordie Hunter, 23-year-old, running the point, and she gave it off to Warburton, who travelled as she changed direction. And it's interesting because you talk about New Zealand, they look like they have made a perimeter game their focus. They're even bringing Warburton outside, trying to draw Lauren Jackson away to make her guard out on the perimeter, looking to play more of a five-out game rather than have a, a designated post player. Is that their only option, Narelle? I mean, they're such a small side. Well, I think that they need to, to go with what their strength is. Their strength is obviously their speed. Their, their lack of size means that it's tough for some big girls to guard on the perimeter. So why not try that? They have nothing to lose. They have to win by more than 17 points. They've got to, they've got to try some new things. Jackson fouled on the low post, and it's going to be a ball for the end for the Aussies. 14 seconds on the shot clock. Screen inbounds. Hurst, who's been playing in France the last couple of years. Turnover, Cox. She's got Edmondson ahead of her. Nice teamwork there, and Edmondson is always going to beat most people down the court on a break. She's quick, and New Zealand have a three-point lead. Well, Kayla Cox played that so well because she just kept the defensive player on her back the whole way, keeping the lane open for Tony Edmondson. It's really good stuff from the Tall Ferns. Hodges inside, doesn't make many mistakes, and she shoots at such a high percentage, Narelle. Well, contrary to what the tall fans are doing, the, the Opals are really isolating one of their post players inside, not allowing for any help at all from the tall fans defenders. Hunter. The players on the bench liked it. Unfortunately, didn't quite get over the front of the hoop. Snell, you can't leave her alone in transition. And that's why... The best shooter in the Australian team puts the Opals in front for the first time in the match. We've gone five minutes, halfway into the opening quarter. Hodges, can she come up with a steal? Well, it won't be a steal, but it is going to be an Opals ball, a turnover. Brendan and Joyce reading the substitutions for the Opals. It's been a fairly hot tempo early, up and down, up and down. Wouldn't have thought that it worry the Opals, Fletch. They've got depth. Yeah, but, you know, in the Lauren Jackson case, OK, she's been out for 12 months. She doesn't have the game conditioning yet, and so he will want to give her some rest along the way. She has taken a seat, and Mariana Tolo's taken her place, and immediately I look for her inside, but she passes to Kristen Veal, who slices one from the corner. It's just really nice to see Kristen Veal nail an early one because she's such a confidence player, and we know that if she makes a couple of early baskets, she relieves that pressure she puts on herself. Snell comes from behind, and there's a steal attempt, and then she got a fair piece of the Craig's arm, so it's going to be a foul. This is going to catch another look at this, actually, as Craig sets up in the low block. Megan Craig, just a youngster, only 20 years of age. She's the tallest New Zealand player at 203 centimetres, so it will slightly change their dynamic when she's in the game. 
She's out in the perimeter and clears some space and allows the drive from Beck, who finishes beautifully, the 17-year-old. New Zealand back to within three, giving plenty of cheek to this heavily favoured Opal side in the opening quarter. Tolo will be disappointed with that, as will the floor wiper who uh, had to <laughs> catch Mariana Tolo as she careered out of control off court. It just shows the mobility advantage Mariana Tolo has over Craig, though, to be able to slip into the basket, just lost the handles on the ball. So Cox, who played 35 minutes the other Davidson, who travelled. What would have happened between uh, Wednesday night games and today is a lot of scouting um, by the coaches and obviously passing that on to the players because a lot of these New Zealand girls we haven't seen before. Girls, they know how they play, but you can really see how hard the New Zealand girls are finding to get themselves open. A little bit of hesitation on their screens really playing a suffocation defence at the moment. New faces for New Zealand in this 11 player squad as they cough it up. Six four as they trip over themselves defensively and it allows Mariana Tolo, well not a completely uh, uninterrupted attack to the basket. She was fouled, but she'll shoot a couple. Well, I think also, too, for this particular match, it's, it's, it's nice for Australia that we get the second match of this leg as well, because it means the Opals girls have had that one game together, try and gel as a team. Remember, this is a whole new group as well. So they've now got a game under their sleeve. They've, they're confident after a first up win, and, uh, and we get to see what is probably the best of the two matches. So Tolo, who went to the 2010 World Championships, but she missed out on selection for the London Olympics. She's looking to solidify her spot in this side on the road to Turkey. Next year, where the World Championships for women will be held. The World Cup for men will be in Spain. And of course, coming up later today, the second of our double-headed Nurel, the Boomers and the Tall Blacks. The Aussie men had a victory in their first uh, match on Wednesday night as well. So a clean sweep for the Aussies on Wednesday. They defeated the, uh, the New Zealand men by 11. Of course, the Opals, the women, defeated the Tall Ferns by 16. They're in front by four. First quarter, three minutes to go. That's and that's a tough lovely shot. finish. Yeah, that's a really tough shot, but we know what a superior athlete Tony Edmondson is. We've seen it. Tough to guard, not always accurate, but tough to guard. She's got seven points, does Edmondson veal. She couldn't do it. Lovely rebound from Craig and kept control of it. Allowed them to happening. And Edmondson, as soon as she puts the ball on the ground, she's putting a defender under pressure. She is. Because she is such a great athlete, she can jump, she can run, she can do all of those things. She's got really good hang time. What I liked about Craig's rebound there, it was a bit of a lesson there for all the young, tall players out there. She took a rebound, she kept it up nice and high, didn't give any little guards an opportunity to steal the ball from her. And it's great to see a player like Edmondson dominate with her national side because she has this role, she has the licence to shoot, and she's playing with such confidence. Whereas in the you know, WNBL team, haven't seen that so much, certainly with her season with Lightning. She was more of a role player, but uh, here she's out to dominate. Here is Tony Edmondson. She averaged 10 points a game last season for the West Coast Waves in the WNBL. Kristen Veal, always aggressive. Long pass, opened up the New Zealanders. They were able to collapse, though, and Tess Madgen turns it over. So New Zealand are level here at 16 points all. Brendan Joyce. Some extended D from the Opals. Concerned. Kelly Wilson guarding Hunter. Left her open just for a second, inviting her to shoot as Wilson went underneath the screen. They do it again. Here's Edmondson, guarded by Veal. Seven seconds on the shot clock. A long way from the basket. Beck, it's got to go up from Hunter. They're going to run it down. Davidson. Oh, and they oh. cough it up. That's disappointing for the Tall Ferns. And now they're immediately under pressure. Imagine. Can't finish against her former Bendigo teammate. But Veal's always active. She <laughs> pops it ahead, trying to steal the ball. Now Hunter's under pressure in a frenetic passage of play. Craig makes 
the basket, but she's fouled Tolo with an errant elbow, according to referee Tony Caldwell. Let's have another look. Let's watch her hook around. Need to be a little bit more discreet than that. <laughs> Got to move the defender. Right idea. So there is uh, Megan Craig, who's flying her trade at, uh, well, she's not plying her trade, I gather. She's learning her trade at college in America. As there's a foul on the inbounds. A lot of fouls called by Elena Chinova and the referee crew. We saw that on Wednesday night. Both teams over the yeah. foul cow limit for the quarter. Obviously four fouls. You're allowed for the quarter and then anything beyond that, you do send the opposition team to the foul line for a bonus two shots. And Michaela Cox talking to referee Chinova and trying to understand the ruling, I suspect. A little hand slap at the end of it. I haven't seen that too many times. The referees and the players with a hand slap around. No. Meanwhile, he's your favourite player, Kristen Veal. One off. On the free throw line, making both shots, and then she's going to have a seat. Her former Canberra teammate, Natalie Hurst, checks in. As does Natalie Burton, having a piece of the action for and Mariana Tolo. And that's an interesting matchup. Natalie Burton guarding Lisa Warburton. Now, they will have trained against each other many times on the practice floor for West Coast Waves in the WNBL. They've got a loose play in New Zealand. They don't get the extra pass. There's an offensive foul. Another one. They are red hot. And players will, players will now have to make some adjustments. We've seen a couple of them now. If we have a look on the screen, let's look for the errant elbow again. Oh, not a lot in that one. It's hard, to, and that's where it's hard to make adjustments when there hasn't been much contact. We understand the Megan Craig one. But that one, a bit harsh on the 17-year-old Davidson, I thought. And that can really knock your confidence as a player as well because you start to get a little tentative worrying about picking up another one of those. Look at that position by Lauren Jackson. Can't finish. Here's Warburton. New Zealand playing well. Only trailing the Opals by two. Beck, one of three teenagers in this lineup. Gives it to Davidson. Another one. And unable to finish. Wilson, she'll look at Hurst. She's got Madgen in the opposite wing. Finds her now. Not quite. Under a minute to go until quarter time. Here's Hunter, who I don't think has had a break in this opening quarter. If she did, it's a brief one. Again, under pressure at the top of the key. Davidson wants to be careful. She's buffeted and can't make the basket. Wilson slows it down. 28 years of age, Kelly Wilson. Magnificent to see her playing for the Opals. It's a great reward, isn't it, Darren? Yeah, absolutely. For consistent work for her Bendigo Spirit WNBL team. Madgen draws the foul. She'll go to the line. And that's what you do like about games like this, Darren, is the opportunity it presents for the, that next that next group down below our superstar Opals is it gives them a chance, one, to represent the country, gives them reward for, the, for what they do for their WNBL team, but it also gives them an opportunity to stake a claim for any future representation. Here's Tess Madgen, who has been involved in Opals programs for a while under previous coach Carrie Graff. A young talent, her brother Ben, of course, has been involved in Boomers programs as well. Uh, another young talent. Four seconds to go until quarter time. Warburton gets around her West Coast teammate and can't finish with the basket. And it was a brilliant opening quarter of action here at the AIS Arena. The Australian Opals, Noel, are, they're coming out. They've been ready to play. They've excited this home crowd. And they go in to quarter time with a four-point lead. Australia 20, New Zealand 16 at quarter time. Excellent crowd building for what 
promises be a, to be a spectacular afternoon of basketball. It's already started there, Al. Entertaining opening quarter. The Aussies, uh, well, obviously, they've had more attempts at goal and they deserve their four-point lead. Look, it's interesting. It's, it's probably a good thing that they've had more attempts at goal because they are shooting a far more inferior shooting percentage than the tall ferns at the moment. But, look, it was really obvious that the Opals made a focus about getting the ball inside, really isolating their post players down in that low block area, challenging the tall fern defenders to go one-on-one -on -one against them. If they choose to collapse, you're going to expose the really good perimeter shooters that the Opals had. Contrary to that, the, the tall ferns were really looking to run the floor, spread their offense, really use their, their lack of size, but their advantage with speed against the, the bigger defenders of the Opals and go to the basket. What I do like about the Opals, though, is that they are looking to push the ball at any opportunity on transition. And of course, Nat Hurst is an absolute catalyst for that, for pushing the ball um, offensively. She is, and I guess Kristen Veal is as well when she's yeah. been in the game, Always the Aussie Isa. point guards. Absolutely. Always trying to look up court. But it, I think it's an interesting strategy because it, it's obviously it's contrasting styles, as you've just identified. And New Zealand would be happy that Australia are shooting those three-point shots because they're only two of seven. Yeah, they've hit a couple, and that's always great. But one of them came in transition when Belinda Snell was left wide open. But in the offense, the Aussies are only one of six from the perimeter, and they were only three of 18 on Wednesday night. So New Zealand, I reckon, would be pretty happy to give the Australians that shot. Well, obviously, that's something that they put on their scouting report is let's almost encourage the perimeter game from the Opals. However, in saying that, Darren, if you continue to give them so many looks, sometime or another they will drop or you're going to give up some offensive rebounds somewhere along the line as well because just remember that we've got some big, tall timber inside for those offensive boards. Racial Spawn is uh, perhaps, well, maybe not the tallest of the timber that we've ever produced, but certainly uh, one of the best. Rach, what are your impressions at quarter time? Or just after, as we start the second quarter? Yeah, I think I think the Opals would have loved to have had a, a bigger lead because this, this is um, trademark New Zealand, though. They absolutely always seem to stick with us for the first half, and then we do tend to run away in the second half. I just think we're playing reasonable defence. As I said, they are finding it hard to get shots away, and Tony Edmondson's having to make shots like that to keep them in the game. I just think a little bit more better flow in our offence for sure. We're still, I think from Wednesday night games, a little bit out of sync. That will start to happen. And if this lady here with Lauren Jackson, you can see every time she's getting it, they're double teaming her. But we've just got so many options in our offence. And Belinda Stell, she's so versatile, as is Laura Hodges. So I just think as the game progresses, the shackles are going to come off and I think we'll end up winning comfortably. So Australia by four. Edmondson with the ball, 11 points she's got. She hasn't missed, that's her first miss. She gets her body into all sorts of awkward positions, but she does find a way to make it count most of the time. She top scored for New Zealand on Wednesday with 18 points, and as one of their captains is really leading from the front. Let's also um, take into account that she plays under their tall ferns coach, Kenny Ker Kennedy. Kennedy, um, for the West Coast Waves. Yep. So her confidence levels are very high playing under him. He gives her the green light with them and she's obviously got a same sort of mentality with this Tall Ferns team. So Australia back to their starting five. In fact, both teams back to their original starting fives at the start of this turn for New Zealand. Hunter, Cox, Lockwood, Warburton and Edmondson for Australia. Hurst, Snell, Screen, Hodges and Jackson. Edmondson gets it to Lockwood. Tough shot, can't finish. The naturalised uh, New Zealander, Casey Lockwood. She was born in California. Moved to New Zealand. She was quite a bit younger than uh, 27 years she is now. At the moment, she's plying her trade with the Townsville Fire in the Australian Women's National Basketball League. There's a couple of early fouls in this quarter to New Zealand. Gives Australia another opportunity. Here's Hurst. I've got to watch her. This young lady, I reckon, has her sights seat, not just on being the starting point guard in this series, but in Turkey and then potentially in Rio in 2016. That's the career trajectory you, you see for Natalie Hurst. Well, look, you know, she spent a lot of years 
on the bench for the Canberra Capitals. She spent a lot of years just in the shadows of the Opals. Maybe her time, maybe her, her destiny is to have it all happen later in her career. Time out, I think, will be called by Kennedy Kiriyama, the Tall Ferns coach. He's not happy with that turnover. And so, with two and a half minutes having elapsed in the second quarter here at the AIS Arena, it's Australia 24, New Zealand 18. We're going to try and eavesdrop on uh, Australian Opals coach Brendan Joyce in a moment. He's currently having a chat to his assistants, Damien Cotter, and our great friend here on ABC Sport, uh, Laurie Chiswick. Here's Brendan Joyce. Second of stops, and then we relax. Right? We want more stops. And we get the stop, you keep running and testing. Don't get back to the job uh, for around about three or four months I think they're out but just great things coming out of the uh, great noises coming out of the Opals program with him in charge a different energy a different voice it's uh, not a criticism at all of, of the previous years under Carrie Grant and before that of course under Jan Sterling but uh, it, it's, it's a fascinating new era for the for the Opals. Spot on message at the beginning of that timeout though in that you know they're getting one or two stops getting two stops and they're relaxing on defense and he wants them to not have any lapses there keep the focus keep the intensity up no lapses I really really like that message early. Now Rach I think I saw you running from uh, the end where you might have been eavesdropping on uh, the New Zealand uh, huddle there. Yeah he's just wanting to really set better screens wait for the screens and really prepare earlier for what they're, they're doing in offence and D, they just feel they're coming in too late on their help rotations and just cleaning the whole thing up and I, I think he's uh, obviously encouraged by their, how they're going but not getting a shot away at the 24 second clock, a few turnovers starting to creep in, that's sort of a sign that they're probably looking, they're losing their focus so he really wanted to get their attention back where it needs to be. And I think there's another offensive foul, Jenny Screen has uh, cost a knock to the head. She, well, there's her one per game. She, she gets on them average. every time. <laughs> I mean, we remember the, uh, oh, wow, that is a serious lump. She's so tough. She's going to stay on. I know we spoke about it a bit last WNBL season, but she uh, played with a face mask for the Adelaide Lightning at different stages. I think I can't remember if it was last season or the year before. Plus, of course, in the uh, Olympic Games semi-final after she, against America, she was so brilliant against their gun, Diana Tarazi, and then in the first half, and then copped a knock and didn't play any further part or any meaningful part in the second half because she basically got knocked out of the game as Walmart and strokes a three to halve the deficit. But she's so tough. Let's have another look at this as Davidson... And Lockwood are there, and oh, that was an accidental clash. Clash that one. of heads, yeah, I think. We see Kayla Francis having checked in for her first minutes of today's match. Straight into the action. But this is still this is game on. New Zealand are pr playing brilliantly. They're shooting the ball a lot better than Australia percentage-wise, and can they draw a level? They do. Michaela Cox is playing superbly. She shot the ball poorly. On, uh, on Wednesday night, just two of 20 from the field. But tonight, she hasn't missed, or this afternoon, she hasn't missed. She's got eight points. Edmondson's got 11, and it's 24 points apiece. And Darren, Brendan Joyce doesn't like it. He hasn't liked the, the defense he's seen the last two times down. He's called a timeout. Jackson thought it should have been an Opals ball, but it's going to be a New Zealand ball when we resume. Because Brendan Joyce does want to talk about things as Jenny Screen. Wow, that is that is not nice to look at as uh, Screen's going down for some medical attention. And the Opals want to talk about things. 24 points apiece, five minutes and 40 seconds to go 
in the second half as Brendan Joyce has a chat to his assistants. I wonder whether in this time that Brendan Joyce stays away, I wonder whether they miss that leadership that Christy Harrow brings in a huddle like that where she starts the talking. The moment you lapse on defence, right, we didn't lock a trail, right, open three. OK, you've got to lock a trail, right, on a staggered dump. All right, that means you can't get screwed. And our bigs are hold up on it. If they turn into it, right, we switch if it's a tight curl, OK? Now, offensively, you need to get to your floor spot. All right, we just turn in and shoot the ball. We've got to make sure that we've got rebounders when we're doing that. Now, this possession, OK, let's go fist, roll Lauren to the rim. All right, you make the pass or the throw back in and play off that, OK? Staying calm, as you would expect, Brendan Joyce. Let's just remind everyone of what this means. This is a World Championship qualifying series. There's only one spot up for grabs. And Australia, if they win tonight, or they win this afternoon, they will qualify directly for the World Championships. If they lose, Australia will still qualify unless New Zealand beat them by more than 16 points because that's the Opal's advantage in a two-match series. It's, a, it's an aggregate. It's basically one 80-minute match. As, what have we got here? It's going to be a New Zealand ball after a missed shot and a foul called against Belinda Snell. So Brennan Joyce and the Opals can afford to stay calm in terms of the World Championship qualifying spot because they've got plenty of points up their sleeve. You wouldn't want to qualify that way, though, would you, Darren? You'd want to go in with a victory. As Michaela Cox drives her way in and draws the foul, she'll go to the line for a couple because this New Zealand sider, without their best player, Natalie Taylor, their captain, is watching on. She uh, wrecked her knee in the WNBL season as Cox, a bigger player than Hurst, used her body well, and she'll go to the line. Normally pretty reliable from here, Michaela Cox. She's one of two tall ferns who have uh, been to the Olympic Games. She went to Beijing in 2008. Yeah, New Zealand back in front, Darren. The back of those two free throws, those two successful free throws, now in the lead by two. They've scored the last eight points as well. Australia have been scoreless for around about four minutes. Here's Francis, loves that fadeaway. Sometimes it works, Narelle, and sometimes it doesn't. On that and occasion, it, it was good. I'm glad it did because it probably wasn't the shot that they really were looking for on a fadeaway when they would, you know, they, they do need a basket. They need to get some consecutive baskets happening. They need to stop this lady right now. She's got 13 points, Tony Edmondson, out of the 28 Tall Ferns points so far. And between her and Michaela Cox, they've only missed one shot from the field as Jackson, who started red hot, scored the Opals' first seven, misses that one. She's been absolutely cold since, but Snell comes up with the steal at half court. And a block shot by Edmondson. Magnificent stuff from the Kiwi captain. They lead by two, and they might double that lead because it was a brilliant pass. And Kailani Purcell, who is Natalie Taylor's younger sister, the, cap the injured captain's younger sister, Makes the basket. They lead by four. Francis misses with the three-point attempt. And That's now Cox has to slow down because her team... Oh, maybe she doesn't. She saw a lane. She went for it and she drew a foul. All of her teammates were just about exhausted in backcourt, Narelle. They'd run a few sprints. And Cox wasn't too fast. Well, I think, it, I, I think Michaela recognised that amongst a couple of the defenders from the Opals, that they looked like they were labouring a little. And that's why she went to the lane knowing that they couldn't get in proper position to guard her well. And you know, this is a challenge now for the Opals. I know they're still just under four minutes to go before half time. But, but certainly the, uh, the Tall Ferns have seized the momentum of this match. She had a magnificent finals campaign of the WNBL, did Cox. Highlighted by 20 points in their huge upset win over the defending champions, Dandenong. And they're on a massive run here. It's 14 points to two. In that time as well, Darren, the Opals have even got ahead on the foul count as well. So at the start of this quarter, the Tall Ferns picked up a couple of early ones, but now the Opals are already above four, well, have hit their four, four foul counts. So any foul they commit now, they will send the Tall Ferns to the line. Especially if they need that basket by Laura Hodges. She doesn't miss Hodges. Two of two in this game. 
Hope. This has been an extraordinary swing in momentum in this game. Cox feeling it. There's two players out there right now, Edmondson and Cox from the Tall Ferns, that the Opals have to knuckle down and say, you girls aren't touching the ball. You girls aren't going to get an open look. Let's challenge another player to make some baskets out there. Purcell probably made a mental error there more than anything. Didn't really need to take on half the Opals team as she weaved her way down the court. This is Hodges. She does miss on that occasion. Now, Cox with her team leading by six. It's not like it's a surprise that Cox and Edmondson are the focal points on offense either. It's, no, uh, and that would be in the Opal scouting reports as well. Warburton, she's already made one. Misses with another attempt. Two and a half minutes to go until half time. Australia being challenged and Tolo. Well, that was, she works hard inside Mariana Tolo. And that's, a, that's a fabulous move by Mariana Tolo, but the, the slightly concerning aspect of that offense was that when you looked at Tolo under the basket, there was no movement on the perimeter from any Opals players, so it meant that the Tall Ferns defenders could collapse if they wanted to, knowing that there was no danger on the perimeter. I think they need to be mindful of that to make sure they've still got some player movement on the perimeter. She misses with the back end, so still a four-point lead to New Zealand. Two and a half, oh, sorry, two minutes to go until half time. Here's Cox, she's got 14 points. Cray, well done by Tolo. Great shot blocker. It's all about anticipation and she read that one well. Snell in rhythm. <laughs> Kelly Wilson with the assist. She's made two of these. And can you give the other assist to Laura Hodges for running the lane so hard that she drew the defender under the basket? creating that opening on the perimeter. And you could just about put your house on Belinda Snell making those threes in transition. She does not miss those. No, she seems to love those ones more than anything. Is just in full speed, bang, stop on a dime. Feet set. Yeah, well, Brendan Joyce is working the uh, chewing gum over furiously at the moment. His side trailing by one. Natalie Earth directing traffic. Wilson. Tough finish, Opal's back in front. A couple of stops and look what it does for them, Darren. Gets them back, some good shots offensively, back in front. Weathered the storm. Yeah. Callicox with a mismatch now. Smaller opponent, they give it up. Hunter not even close. Now Hurst is fouled. That's probably a smart foul, I'd say, provided that Craig isn't in foul trouble, which I'm just looking. She isn't, so that's, uh, it might be a third. Well, it's not Craig, but at least it stopped what would have been a certain basket because the Aussies were off in transition, and now there's a timeout being called with uh, under a minute to go until half time, and Kennedy Kerryama's side trailing 34 to 35. for the half-court trap. Listen, Roger here to block out. You stay the entire time, but as soon as they make their second shot, if they make it, block out. Obviously, if they miss, we'll get possession. If they make it, you call me to sprint down here. I want you and you inbounding the ball here. You and you inbounding the ball. I want your ass swinger. Swing Stella through. All right, then flash up through the guts. Then hold it. Let's get a good look offensively. If they're in zone, we go swinger in the half. If they're in man, I want us going an early down flat screen. If we can't get penetration, we need to lift the air straight away. Let's get into our continuity and get a good shot. Hey, what's the here? What's the I love their basketball here at yes. in Canberra, don't they? Yep. When Lauren Jackson, born and bred at Albury and playing all her basketball in Australia right here in this building is the draw card for this match, of course, for the locals. But there might be a bloke coming up a little bit later on who I think that a few have come to see as well. Mills? Oh, who's that? Mills, I think his name is. 
No, I haven't heard of him. Sorry. You might have seen him in the NBA Finals, sort of waving a towel on the San Antonio Spurs bench. Ah, oh, OK. Rightio. The Australian Boomers coming up later yeah, on, of course. Looking forward to that. Against the uh, New Zealand Tall Blacks. What an afternoon of basketball we have on ABC Sport. There's this is a great venue for basketball, though. The is. crowd's close to the action. It's good viewing from all around the stadium. The crowd, the, the players feel it out on the floor. There's so much, so much atmosphere here. It's wonderful. The great game here with New Zealand, having led by six, now trailing by three. The Opals on a run as Cox tries to bring her team level. She can't. Opals have scored the last nine. We're getting close to half time, under 30 seconds. Mariana Tolo's been big in this chain swing of momentum too. Darren grabbing some boards defensively, going to work offensively, but getting some good stops with the block shots as well. She has, and you mentioned at one point during that run, Narelle, of, uh, that New Zealand had, um, that the Opals were looking a little bit tired. And we know that Lauren Jackson hasn't played for a year, lacking a bit of match fitness, a couple of others I think uh, probably well, lucky about it. Yeah, as well absolutely. Out of WNBL season, so they're not in peak condition. And they were struggling a little bit as well with the heat of the game. So Tolo's come in, and she's always energetic. And here she is on the free throw line again. She's got four points, Tolo. At 24, can we still call it youthful enthusiasm? I think so. I think we can. The Opals lead by five now. She's one of the babies of the Opals, anyway. She is. This is probably going to be the last play of the half. Australia leading by five. New Zealand with possession. Cox. Not quite. Five seconds on the clock here with Hurst giving it to Snell. Loves these. Well, she famously shot a ball from three-quarter court against Brazil at the Olympic Games to take a game to overtime. But Belinda Snell could not quite repeat the dose from slightly closer here in uh, this match against New Zealand. And at halftime, the Opals will be pretty happy with their work. They'll be satisfied with their work to lead New Zealand by five. Australia 39, New Zealand 34. And there are the Opals, actually the bench players there having their own little huddle. Uh, I think the they're starters... checking out Jenny Screen's egg on her forehead, actually, <laughs> They <Darren>. might be. <laughs> As, uh, it'll be interesting to see if Jenny Screen takes any further part in the game. We know she's tough, but she's been replaced in the starting five for this second half by Kelly Wilson, who inbounds the ball and then gets it back. So Australia going with Hurst and Wilson in the backcourt. Snell, Hodges and Jackson up front. New Zealand sticking with four of their Love original that. starters as Jackson Love is it. inside and that's how they started the game the rail she had seven points to start the match hasn't scored since but, but they go there. But what you have to love about that, Darren, is the way that she went to the basket. It wasn't to settle for a turnaround jump shot early in this second half. She went right to the basket, one foot, and just demanded the defender defend her while they were left nothing else to foul. She's too strong in that position. And she spoke after the match on Wednesday night and said, it's great to get the first game in a year under the way, out of the way. But she also, the other thing that she said is, and to be pain free. Yes. She'd been, and that's what people don't understand. She'd been playing with pain, not injury, but pain, serious pain for well over a year, maybe even a couple of years, Narelle. And she's got a smile on her face out there, which is great to see. Well, I think that injury was just the culmination of playing with such pain for so long. <laughs> Kelly Wilson bangs that three. What a start for the Opals coming out after half time. It is, and remember, they were on an 11-0 run to end the second quarter. So Australia actually have scored the last 16 points in the game to go from a six-point deficit to this 10-point lead that they currently hold. Shot clock counting down. Edmondson's got to stay aggressive, and that's why she breaks that 16-0 run. Carrie Graff actually an interested onlooker, former Opals coach, just wandering behind uh, Kennedy Kerry Armour, I think, with... The uh, Minister of Sport, it might be Kate Lundy there as well. We've got all the dignitaries here today. Well. Barry Barnes is here in the crowd as well. What a day it is for oh, the basketball awesome. community, in particular here in Canberra. With the Opals and the Boomers. The Boomers coming up in, well, around about an hour's time. That match will be tipping off. The Boomers and the Tall Blacks. Davidson 
has it ripped away from her by Jackson. You can't show the champ that much of the ball. And now it's going to be Wilson in transition. Gives it up to Snell. She was never moving from that spot down. She was set. Kelly Wilson knew it. Timeout, tall fans. Kennedy Carriama wants to talk about things, and he's unhappy. You don't see that often with Kennedy Carriama. But you can see that with the intensity of the game, his intensity is lifting and he's got to lift the standards of his team. We're going to try and eavesdrop on what he has to say. They trial we're by 13. Up full screen and we're attacking Jacko. Now, if they go switch, that's great. All right, Tony, keep looking to turn the corner. Keep looking to turn the corner. Defensively, they're going to keep going at you. All right? So, Lisa. First of all, she faces off, you to jam her, so she can't beat you off the dribble. So she has to force to shoot a shot over your hand. If she plays the low block, they've got Wilson out and Nat Hurst now for and Snell. So all shooters, but we have to pick our poison here. Alright, we're still gonna double on that. We close and rotate out with a hand and ball. Offense. I would have thought that that timeout needed to have a bit of discussion about defense because that's where it's at for the tall fans. Interestingly, in that offense, did you hear them talk about go at Jacko? Yep, they absolutely did. They know that she's not at full fitness and they want to get her out of the game because they can't stop her at the other end. So why not try and draw a few fouls? Interesting, just on Carrie Graff watching on, pretty sure she coached New Zealand as well. Uh, you're nodding, and I think uh, pretty sure she coached both New Zealand, well, she coached New Zealand before she coached Australia. So uh, there, there she is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I wonder, <laughs> wonder what camp she's in. Maybe spawn her old mate and go and ask her. <laughs> Steph can. Steph smiling away. There's the Opals lead by 13 after another defensive stop. Wilson was open, but her feet weren't set. I thought they were set, Darren. Belinda Snell's loving it. 14 points now for Snell. She's got 12 of them from behind the arc. And this is an extraordinary period of domination in this match from the Opals. And as she jogged backwards, back down the court, Darren, you could see how relaxed she was. She knows she's feeling it right now. You watch out, she's going to be looking for that three just about every time down the floor. Um, she does, uh, as Kennedy Kiriyama's got his problems. The margin at the moment, 16. Deficit for his side. Belinda Snell, we know what an extraordinary scorer she is at, uh, at WNBL level. Several times has been over 30 and 40 and even up to 50. And they're away again. Hurst, three on two here if Wilson joins. Decides to slow it down. Jackson gives it back to the Bendigo player. Way easy. And again. misses. Jackson can't clean up. And Cox runs it down. Four on three now for New Zealand. Cox goes to work. Warburton could have gone straight back up and they've turned it over. It's dried up a lot for them, Darren. Yeah. The tall fans dried up from their shooting percentage and all of a sudden you can see their confidence has just taken a battering as well. They're not, they're not looking to, get, to take the shot when their feet are set. They're second guessing themselves. Says Jackson has a rest. Done by uh, Hodges, positioning her body to allow Wilson the clear path to the basket, but Kelly Wilson couldn't finish. When another foul on Davidson, she's been a bit stiff, I reckon, Panita Davidson. She's had a couple of offensive fouls. One of them in particular looked particularly uh, unlucky. And then that one aggressively out in the passing lanes. There wasn't a whole lot in it, I didn't think. But it's great to see a 17-year-old and and a netballer as well. She's in the New Zealand high school uh, netball team, Davidson, but it's great to see her playing with, without fear. Yeah. Against the second best of the team, go. ranked the second best in the world, as Belinda Snell has no fear of missing. I think that's a little X on the, on the court over there, and that's Belinda Snell right now. That's her spot. She's made three in a row from there. 
Edmondson can't connect either, and Hurst is off to the races again. Hodges is running with her. Oh, well done by uh, Tony Edmondson, who blocks the shot, and it's going to be a Tall Ferns ball, and they want to talk about things once more, because the Opals have opened up what should be a series-defining lead. They lead at 55 to 36. We're not quite halfway through the third quarter, but they are full of confidence. And Belinda Snell is shooting the lights out. She's got 17 points. It's 16 points to just two in this third quarter. This, is, this group's good here. We've got a couple more minutes before I make changes. All right. OK. Keep the defence on. The communication one and two here is really good. Snelly three. If, if Edmondson's, you know, Snelly, you've got to plug the floor. I don't want you backing off her to the, below the three-point line. We've got to give her help. Remember, the on-ball screen late clock with Edmondson is what? And we're in rotations, right? Okay, just with Edmondson. Everything else is a switch. Late clock. All right. Hey, um, let's dive tank Laura. So you flash up high for your jumper, and let's go at lock when she's got four fouls. All right, let's go. Belinda Snell, 17 points, including five triples. That's the first of them, Narelle. But wait, there's more. That's the X. That's where you want it to be. Isn't it amazing? The shooters, they know when they're in rhythm, they just find their spot and bang. And you love it. There is nothing better than when you're a shooter and you know that you're feeling it like that. Well, tell us the feeling. Is it just a... It's just... Because I can assure you, I've never felt it. <laughs> 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 You're just in the zone? <laughs> yeah, you are. What is the zone? Uh, the zone is just the zone. Yep. It is There's floating no on air, Darren. There is. There's, no, there's no words that can de describe that zone. They're just It's just the zone. You won't know unless you're there. OK. <laughs> 55 to 36. Melinda Snell has scored the last nine points for the Opals. Well, Brendan Joyce didn't stay true to his word. He said we were going to stay with that group for another two to three minutes. 20 seconds, he rings us up. There's no way to build trust, is it? No, but I must say, he almost looked a little lost for words in that timeout because there wasn't a whole lot for him to talk about. The girls are doing a really good job and now. they've picked off another pass here, and Hurst, oh, easy as you like. Oh, Just it's your so, time. So poised. It's a 19-point lead, and... Just remember, New Zealand led by six. It was 34 to 28. Since that time, it's 29 to two, Australia's way. And look, in all honesty, Rachel alluded to it a little earlier in the match. It was probably only a matter of time before that happened, before the dominance of the Opals on their home court would take effect in this match. When you see the shackles are off and rolling, you just see how it, everyone just becomes more relaxed. Uh, you know, Belinda Snell, when, whether she gets that hot hand, I think it's just contagious. Their running game has really picked up. Fitness doesn't seem to be a problem now. And that's what happens when you get a nice lead as well. You, you just get your second wind. They look much more fluent now, don't they? Just in, in their body language, everything. Even, even Brendan Joyce ringing the substitutions, it's more fluent now. Yeah, absolutely. And there's so much to look forward to with this group over the next couple of years as we build up to Turkey, the World Championships. And the Opals and the Boom is hoping for a clean sweep today. Probably won't quite make up for a Bledisloe Cup thrashing last night, Narelle. But uh, <laughs> they, they, still, they still want to be trying to get some national pride back, I would have thought. Oh, New Zealand, you're only as good as your last game. <laughs> Here's Casey Lockwood on the free throw line. Makes the three point play. And it's 57 to 41. Veal back into the game. Played over 300 games in the WNBL. She's won championships. She's been an all star. The only thing missing from her resume, Kristen Veal, is a an appearance for the Opals at a major championship. She's played for the Opals plenty of times before, but never at a World Championships or Olympic Games. Maybe in the twilight of her career, that could be what's in store for the lady who's uh, running the point at the moment for the Opals. Well, they don't just hand out uh, <laughs> berths, do they? On World Championship sides, you've got to earn them. And when you think about the class that's still to come back into this side, there's got to be plenty of competition for spots as Madgen drives in and can't finish. 
We just have to think about the great story of Tully Bevelac for Darren. Yeah. Uh, you know, Kristen's 32, Tully was 36, so that's why you never give up. Great point. Basket from uh, Kailani Purcell out on the perimeter. So they're coming back here in New Zealand. They're staying in the contest. The Opals, having rung those changes, aren't looking quite as fluid at this offensive end. Imagine with a long step thrown away by Edmondson. Great stuff. She, she's playing well, Edmondson. Just 15 good points, a couple of blocks. She's got to stay aggressive at this end. She's their leader. You would have to attribute a lot of that development of Antonia Edmondson to the WNBL, though. Playing in such a superior competition for week in, week out. Helped her development. Veal into Burton, the bolter. Who came out of uh, the Uni Games program and yes. just found herself in this emerging Opals team. And then she did so brilliantly at the training camp that they moved her from the emerging Opals camp over into the Opals camp. And now she's found herself on the Opals floor. On the Opals floor. Uh, I think probably probably helped by an injury to Abby Bishop and uh, Susie Batkovic not being available for this series. But I'll tell you what, they don't, as we said just a moment ago, they don't give away these green and gold sing singlets lightly, Narelle. And uh, at just at 24, uh, 24 years of age, yeah. And for a tall player, 24 is still very young. She will take a while still to mature with her, her physical size as well. And just learning the trade. Hey, she's getting now to learn from Lauren Jackson. So Brendan Joyce's team is doing the business. They lead New Zealand by 13. But there's 20, plenty more action to go after this game. We've still got a quarter and a bit to go in this match for the women. But what about the men, Darrell? Coming up at 4 o'clock, Dave Simmons' son, Ben, Australian legend. Dave Simmons' son, uh, Ben. Paddy Mills in front of his home fans here in Canberra. Joe Ingalls and another bunch of London Olympians are going to be taking the floor. Matty Delavadova, who knows? Will he find his way? into the NBA this year, as well as a new coach for the Boomers, Andre Lamanis. They're taking on the Tall Blacks. That's coming up with tip-off at 4 o'clock. It's going to be exciting. This building is going to fill up even more than it already is, and it's going to get louder than it already is. So stay right here on ABC Sport. And it was a clean sweep for the Opals and Boomers on Wednesday, and they're hoping to do the same thing here again. Anybody who's anybody here in basketball in Australia is uh, here today watching on. There's Burton, converts, 59-44. Cox has gone a little bit cold since the brilliance in the opening half. But I guess you'd expect that. It's hard to maintain that uh, intensity and superb shooting. They probably made a bit more of a, a focus of defending her in this second half, the Opals. Hurst misses. Well, since the Opals' offense has picked up, their defense has picked up as well. Just the confidence right across the floor. Two minutes until three-quarter time. Cox turned the corner, but she's harassed by Natty Hurst. Wearing her like a glove, Natalie Hurst. And then you get past Natalie Hurst, you run into Lauren Jackson. Yeah. Yep. Purcell oh, throws one up and gives a little finger wave to the crowd. Why not? And her sister Natalie Taylor having a bit of a giggle about Absolutely, that one on the bench. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Still just, laughing. Just 18 years of age. As Zabek squares Speaking it. of, yeah. speaking of Natalie Taylor, this there will be Hannah Zavex will be a teammate of Natalie Taylor in the upcoming WNBL season as she's be suiting up with the Logan Thunder. In southeast Queensland. Yeah. Promises to be a, an interesting lineup this year, Nero. Oh, yeah, they've done a really good job in the off-season recruiting. Can't wait for the WNBL to start. It'll tip off in early October. The Canberra Capitals look strong again with... Uh, Lauren Jackson and Natalie Hurst back, which will be exciting. And of course, now that Kathleen McLeod is uh, is going to be missing, well, she was probably going to be missing anyway because of a knee problem. But there's uh, Natalie Hurst found the space down low. Jackson cleans up her mess. And 
Kathleen McLeod was going to miss probably with a knee problem, but now being pregnant, it weakens the Dandenong Rangers uh, significantly. Bendigo Spirit have been out in the recruiting department as well. The defending well. champion, Bendigo oh, Spirit. got stronger. Yeah. Edmondson. And that, add to that with Bendigo Spirit as well. And Kelly Wilson brings this experience back into that lineup. Here we go. Jackson. Won't the crowd love this? Oh, yes! How good would Lauren Jackson be feeling inside now? Those little butterflies. Mum and Dad look... Well, they look pensive, let's be honest. <laughs> they, they weren't jubilant there. They've seen it before. <laughs> Lauren's mum and Dad, they have seen it all before. 18-point lead to the Opals. New Zealand's Michaela Cox counting it down for the last shot of the quarter. Five seconds now. That's trying to create shot. her own shot. And it's a shot by violation. It's going to be an Opals ball. And I reckon it should be... A, the, the clock's gone down to 2.6 seconds. I actually think it should be about three seconds here. I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, these are teaching moments, aren't they, Narelle? Uh, it's not going to make or break the game here, but it's a teaching moment yeah. for Brendan Joyce, but he's not too fussed about the clock. He's going to leave it at 0.6 of a second. So um, it's going to be three-quarter time in a, in a very short while. We're just waiting for the score bench to adjust. Well, maybe they are going to dial up a, a couple of extra seconds for the Opals. Yes, they are. So 3.5 seconds on the clock here for the Opals. Kristen Veal. She's effectively double teamed in the backcourt. The oh, pre yeah. oh. Oh. It looked okay, but it's no good. But the Opals' form is exceptional at the moment. A dominant third quarter performance. Saw them extend a five point lead to 18 with a quarter to play here on ABC Sport. Twenty-seven to fourteen in that third quarter. Narelle, the Opals have established and maintained their advantage as we expected coming into this game. They've been much better from the floor since quarter time, and they've been uh, sharing the ball and looking after the ball. Importantly, well, that third quarter, Dan, that was just Opals, Opals, Opals. It was all one-way traffic, pretty much. I know that the Tall Ferns managed to put thirteen points on the board, but. It was just a dominant display from the Opals, led by number 12, Belinda Snell. She really kick-started that from the three-point line. Lauren Jackson got the first basket right under, right one foot from the hoop. That was a great start for the quarter. But then Belinda Snell from that same spot on the floor, three times in a row, bang, 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 and that just set the tone for that third quarter for the Opals to no end. What do you think it was that clicked for them? Was it just that little bit of extra time and they got a bit of confidence up or was there something that they fundamentally changed? I don't think they changed too much. I think that they just upped their intensity for that very first start of that second half and things dropped for them. Their shots dropped. They got some good balls. They got a couple of consecutive stops and you could see the body language change of the tall ferns. You could see the body language increase positively for the Opals and then away it went. Basketball is such a game of momentum swings and the Opals were able to really drive that momentum and hold it for as long as they possibly could. And that's the thing, and they lost it in that second quarter when New Zealand went on a 14-2 run, but they rested back the advantage, finishing the quarter with an 11-0 run and then starting up that quarter with an 18-2 run. It's, it, could, it is amazing what momentum can do. Those intangibles, Narelle, yeah. they, they, they change games. And Any shots that they were getting in the first first half high percentage shots. That's why their shooting percentage was so high. Look at this running at the floor of the Opals. Hurst. Really interested to see how she plays this last quarter. Hasn't been her best shooting night, Natty Hurst. But 
She does look to control the ball. Here's Wilson. But she looks dangerous all the time, Darren. Whether she's shooting well or not, that's down. No, it's very close. It's all right, Narelle. It's your first game for a new season. Uh, thank you. Just it looks pretty good angle. We were just right there. That Allow to perfect. shed that bit of rust. OK, thank you. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That is poetry emotion. Two senior Opals players just looking in sync. Absolutely perfect offence. The margin hits 20. But not for long. Michaela Cox charges right back down the other end. She registers her 18th point. 50 to 68. Here's Wilson. Open. Here's Snell, though. Better option. Maybe not. Wrong spot. <laughs> Kelly Wilson. I, I must admit, I did think that Kelly Wilson was... Uh, in the side, almost as just a, a token shooter, a bit playing a bit like the, the Jess Bibby role when she came into the side. But I was chatting to Opal's assistant and our uh, commentary colleague, as Kelly Wilson does bury a trademark three-point shot. I was chatting to Laurie Chizik uh, yesterday in preparation for the game, and Laurie said to me, no, she's doing so much more than that. She's really uh, impressed both Brendan Joyce and the rest of the coaching staff with her tenacity at the defensive end and her ball handling ability and her poise. It just goes to show what learning from Christy Harrow exactly. uh, and that championship experience from last year, how much it helps you grow as a player. But she's had the greatest mentor in a point guard position of all time. And, you know, pretty much maybe even in this country, you know, when you, you look at Michelle Timms, Jean Cheeseman in the early days, but Christy Harrow of the modern yep. era, she's had the greatest mentor of all time. And, uh, you know, it's interesting when she's out on the floor with Nat Hurst, she's, she's assuming that point guard role just as much as Nat Hurst. So that is that shows the confidence that the coaching staff have with her in that role. Snell's got 17 points. Passes this one up to Wilson, who goes inside to Hodges, who just doesn't make mistakes. She's the, I said that earlier, but she's the, the real glue of this side, and Wilson's feeling good. She can't make it. But there's a reason why Laura Hodges has been to three Olympic Games and was part of a world championship team. She doesn't put up big numbers, but the number 11, formerly well, known as Laura Summerton, has been an integral part of this Opal's lineup for almost a decade now. When we talk about era parents with uh, Christy Harrow and who's going to take over that role, let's also think about who Laura Summerton learned her, or Laura Hodges learned her trade from, our very own racial spawn. There's well, one for you, Rach. <laughs> You know, um, what I guess I'd love to see Laura still do is she used to be such a great runner of the floor, and I know she has a probably well, she's running now. Here she goes. Because she has had to play, you know, a bit of the three spot in the last probably four years in this group, but I love seeing her play the four spot because she does it beautifully and she's so versatile. She, you know, she's got the back to the basket moves, or she can kill you from front to the basket. Is that where she's most comfortable as well? Do you yeah. um, personally like knowing her as a player? Is that where she's most comfortable? Definitely. Um, you know, it's what she has played most of her career at and I know the players these days obviously have that versatility but uh, when you have a favourite spot obviously that's where you like to play. Australia by 19 points yes. and another turnover, Nurel. Yeah, you could see that one coming. You were just hoping and praying that the referee was going to see that one as well because Lisa Morbin and I think had one of those uh, tall black, uh, sorry, all black rugby league, rugby junior tackled tackles on, on Laura Hodges setting that screen. So six and a half minutes to go. Australia having won the first game. Uh -huh. 66 to 50 have looked more impressive at the offensive end in this second game. Well done by Davidson again. She's really impressed me, Davidson. She's shown no fear whatsoever. Couldn't come up with a steal. Zavek short. Now Cox, she's got Hurst to worry about picking her pocket. She doesn't, but Tolo throws it away. Now down the other end. Zavek decides to pull it up. How many times have we seen that Mariana Tolo block in this house? Well done by Warburton. Forcing a turnover, you're right. And Tolo does, I know she's six or five, but she doesn't foul when she blocks, and she's been able to do that since she was a youngster. It's, it's, it's brilliant to watch. 196 centimetres uh, in the new language, Mariana Tolo, as we look at some of her handiwork. She was sweating on this. And just throw it away as a timeout is called with five minutes and 52 seconds remaining in this one. It's Australia 71, New Zealand 52.
Brendan Joyce currently consulting with his assistants, Laurie Chiswick and Damien Cotter. Is anyone taking the lead in this timeout? No, it all looks pretty relaxed down there, Narelle. We've got to get on the split line. Everyone's gripping us and we just not risk it either. And Matty no, Hurst no. pipes up. Before Brendan Joyce. Really focus here. What does elbows mean? Where's the ball go? Elbows. All right, so that's where it's got to go. Now, they're desperate. They're chasing you, all right? So what we want to do is time it so we're coming out for the catch on the wing and both figs are lifting at the same time, all right? So we're throwing the ball to the wing where the cutter's going. We back door and we be patient and then we've got the action off the ball. And if there's nothing there, you get a swing and a finish. Now, the only difference with the swing and the finish, I want you to slip the on ball to the rim so it's a post catch, all right? We got it? Okay, elbow action. Let's go. Keep up the defense. There's uh, Ben Madgen, whose sister Tess is here, watch uh, playing for the Oval. She's currently sitting on the bench. Ben, an NBL star, is uh, sitting just behind her. I, mean, I couldn't spot where that location was. I've got to say, <laughs> or NBL Rookie of the Year, and has been a super player over the last couple of seasons. And coming up, of course, is. Uh, in commentary after this is going to be the coach of the Sydney Kings, Shane Hill. Tall fans into his own. Sorry, Darren. Interesting when Brendan Joyce just warning his all opals that the tall fans are going to get desperate. Desperation can get you back in the game or it could really, really blow out. Straight down the middle. So as, I was, as I was saying to Earl, after this, as we know, the boomers and the tall bikes are coming up and joining you and I in commentary with Steph is going to be the legend himself, four-time Olympian, Shane the Hammer Hill. He's just uh, made his way down the road from... If we, from, can get him uh, away from, from, if we can get him away from signing autographs on the sidelines, Darren. Absolutely. I, he still hasn't changed the blonde hair, has he? <laughs> he can't hear anything that's being said about him right now. <laughs> Looking resplendent in his, uh, is he in his orange tie. Australia 71, New Zealand 54. Here's Wilson, who's at the Zavik, who's, still as we said, zone. yeah, they still they haven't mixed the defence up as much as we thought they might, the tall ferns. Look, without Belinda Snell out, with Belinda Snell not out there, it's probably not a bad idea for the tall ferns to go into a zone. You've still got Nat Hurst and you've still got Kelly Wilson out there who are great long-range shooters, but obviously Belinda Snell is the most potent hmm. from the three-point line. So Zavik, who has been playing in Hungary, uh, for the last uh, couple of seasons, having spent some time, obviously plenty of time in the WNBL playing for Bendigo and also being part of a championship with the Bulleen Boomers. Just thinking about New Zealand, we mentioned at the start, Narelle, that they've got a lot of new faces, six new faces in their lineup today. They're looking towards Rio, really. The Olympics are easier for the Tall Ferns to qualify for than the World Championships because whilst there's only one spot available out of Oceania at both, the, at least with the Olympics, there are more teams who get a chance and there's a second chance tournament before the Olympic Games, which the Tall Ferns have been successful in at times. That was. Um, and of course they have qualified uh, for the Sydney Games when we hosted and, and uh, to one other as well. So really, for Kennedy Kerryama, this isn't so much a program for, for Turkey next year, it's, it's more for Rio in 2016. Yes, it's not a short-term one, it's a long-term focus and it's any wonder then that he, with that in mind, that he is blooding so many teenagers right now. He's got some really good talented senior players out there with Michaela Cox and Tony Edmondson and Lisa Warburton that they can learn from. You put Natalie Taylor back in there Absolutely. as well. And that's a really strong core group. But it is hard to get past the Aussies. They've only ever beaten the Opals once. And that was just before the Beijing Olympics when the Opals had not their full strength team in as the crowd just tried to that will collective. that one home. The I love groan. that collective. Oh. Jackson currently with 18 points. She's top score for the Opals. This lady, Michaela Cox, is top score for the match with 20. 
Well, Lauren Jackson's just quietly going about her business in this match. Wednesday night's match, her 22 points were really obvious 22 points. But in this particular one, she's just quietly going about racking up her numbers. And uh, when you mentioned then that she was their top scorer, I had to have a second look at the scoreboard for that one. Not that I never didn't trust you. Long shot by Jackson. You can be athletic, Tony Edmondson, but you've got to be... Uh, you've got to be better than that around the superstar. Lauren Jackson, 32 years of age. And here's Craig. 200 centimetres. Just over 200 centimetres, actually. Missing on the turnaround. You hope for New Zealand's sake that she can be a cornerstone of their path for the future as they develop basketball. The 22nd ranked nation in the world, New Zealand, according to FIBA official rankings. That's overall as Kelly Wilson misses. But there to clean it up is Kayla Francis, and she's going to go to the line for a couple. Just found that interesting doing some research leading into this game that Australia overall ranked fourth as uh, the Boomers uh, getting ready. We've got uh, Ben Simmons there, I think. Dave Barlow was just in the background. Ryan Brokoff was there and I think I just missed. Is that AJ Ogilvy there as well? Uh, Aaron Baines it is looking on. San Antonio Spurs uh, player. He's been spent some time over in the NBA. They're coming up, of course, the Boomers at half past, or in half an hour rather, at four o'clock. The tip off in that one. But the Boomers and the Tall Blacks are ranked pretty close. The Boomers ranked 10th, the Tall Blacks ranked 18th. There's a bigger disparity between the women's teams, and that is currently being shown on the scoreboard. Here's Veal for a second triple. Nice. And look good straight off the hand. Wonderful transition by the Opals. Re-establishes that 20-point buffer with three minutes to go. 23-point buffer now. Scoreboard just a little bit slow to update there. 77 to 54. There's Brendan Joyce chatting to his assistants. What will he take out of this, Narell? What, what will be the what were the key things? And I'm sure Rachel will have some thoughts on this, which she might quiz some of the, the players and even Brendan himself afterwards. But what would you have been most happy about if you were sitting? as the head coach of the Opals after these pair, this pair of matches. Other than the obvious, I, you've yes. qualified for the World Championships. I think what he would be really pleased with is both games have progressed, just the, the the continuity within their offense that has gotten better and better. They've found their mojo, they've found their sync, they've found their rhythm together. Okay, it's still a little patchy, but it's getting better. And I think that would be pleasing for him. You know, they haven't had a massive preparation before this series, and they've brought Lauren Jackson back into the lineup. That's something new for all of the girls to, to think, to consider again. So I think he would be happy with that. But the important aspect of, of the actual skill of basketball is just what a difference good defence makes. Once you knuckle down defensively, everything else takes care of itself. Jackson's up to 20 points. 79 to 56. Just a pretty soft foul there on Michaela Cox. There's time counting down on this one. The crowd have been thoroughly entertained. Michaela Cox has been great. 20 points, her teammate. 20 points and nine rebounds as well for Cox, which is pretty impressive for a, <laughs> for a 174 centimetre guard. Exceptionally. Showing her experience and talent and commitment as well. Tony Edmondson for New Zealand with 21 points. It's been a two-pronged attack for the Tall Ferns. Yeah, probably the player they've really missed on the scoreboard would be Lisa Warburton. They would really yeah. expect to get more than three points out of her if they want to seriously contend against this team. She struggled again in the first game. Uh, she struggled as well in the first game. Registered her first points almost at three-quarter time, Rach. Yeah, because she didn't actually ha yeah, she didn't have a shot in the first game. And I was speaking to Dean Kinsman um, about that. He did say that uh, they really didn't get her the ball a lot in Wednesday night game. But uh, when that's happening, you do have to demand the ball yourself and, and want it even more. 
Ooh, Kayla Francis skips in a little bit before the free throw, but Jackson pretty happy. She has a seat. She's got uh, 21 points, does Lauren Jackson. We've got another timeout here. 80 to 58. The Opals comfortably in front in this one with two minutes to go. So again, another timeout. We've got. Uh, Plenty of, look at Australian basketball royalty here. I mentioned before that Dave Simmons, of course, a champion with the Melbourne Tigers, whose son's here, Cal Bruton's here Herb as well. Herbigation. 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 Cameron Cannon's days. Well, there you go. They're all Hasn't here. Hasn't he lit up this floor before? Well, I'll tell you what, it is uh, near. Brendan Joyce, of course, a, a championship coach in the NBL. And, of course, coming up, the Boomers and the Tall Bikes. Stay tuned. We'll have the Harker. We'll have the... All the action, the slams, and Casey Frank with his beard will be in full voice and full form. And of course, Paddy Mills on his home court. They wouldn't get, they don't get too many opportunities to see him, and it's going to be magnificent. Go on, I just want to change it. They, they, the, 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 the tall blacks will do the hucker for us. We've got the chicken dance going on in the crowd right yeah, now. How do you reckon that might go to intimidate the opposition? Yeah, it wouldn't. Oh. But the Tall Blacks, they didn't intimidate the Boomers during the week in the first game as could be an eight second violation. They just get it over New Zealand. But they did give the Boomers a hell of a fright. They led by seven points halfway through the third quarter and Paddy Mills inspired the Boomers to make a run and to come back and to take over the game. But as Michaela Cox splashes another three, but they were really, really good. They're so physical, the, the Tall Blacks. And that's what they'll be trying to do again, is to be physical and to push the Boomers off their game because they don't have the size to match them, really, do they? Well, they don't. And I just, in that particular match, I loved the enthusiasm and the energy that was brought onto the floor by your Ben Simmons, by your, yep. by your Dante Exums. I thought they did a wonderful job in just changing the tempo of that match and really sparking that change in momentum. Shot clock violation there. The, the Opals, rather, uh, couldn't get the shot away. As now, I wonder, Rach, uh, what the plan might be for the Opals over the next 12 months or so. Uh, a, a few friendlies and trying to get as, as much... I know it's difficult with the players away, particularly those in the WNBA, to get them all together, but they'll have to try and get as much match practice as possible before the World Championships. We well, might come back to Rachel Spawn in a moment. Our veteran of many World Championship and Olympic campaigns is Veal... Flicks it to Madgen in the corner, who finds her range. She would be so enjoying that. She probably oh, yeah. hasn't had the best of matches, particularly shooting-wise. She's had her a first couple field of goal. Yeah, had a couple of shots blocked. Missed a couple of other ones that she would expect to make, so that one would have felt nice. All right, so another foul against the Opals. 36.8 seconds. So they're in the bonus New Zealand, so we're going to have... The, uh, another couple of free throws for Tony Edmondson, who has been brilliant. 21 points, make that 22. At 58% from the field and hasn't missed a free throw. Haven't seen much of her in the second half, though. The Opals have done a really good job yep. of denying her the ball, keeping it out of her hands whenever she's in a dangerous position. We might get Rach to explore that topic of the uh, Opals' plans for the next 12 months to the extent that they know them uh, when she has a chat to a couple of the players and the coaching staff after this game is wrapped up. We've got 26 seconds to go. Here's Cox bringing the ball over the halfway. As New Zealand count down, there's enough times just for this one more play. Warburton can't finish. Madgen is fouled. She's going to make the long walk up to the other end of the quarters. Bygate gave her a bit of a uh, hip and shoulder there. And Tess Madgen's going to shoot a couple of free throws with 7.4 seconds remaining on the clock. Just 
Tess Magin, who is one, I think every Australian have they scored except for Jenny Screen. Every Australian has scored except for Jenny Screen, who was out uh, injured in, the, in that first half. He wasn't able to take any further part in the game, but the co-captain didn't need to because the Opals with a brilliant definite at the end from Tony Edmondson. And, and a, a worthy highlight for New Zealand, who have been brave, particularly the co-captains, Tony Edmondson and Michaela Cox, who were brilliant. Both scoring are over 25 points apiece. But in the end, it was the Opals game and it was the Opals series. They won the first match in Auckland by 16 points on Wednesday. And today in the return bout in Canberra, they've defeated the New Zealand Tall Ferns 84 to 66. And the Australian Opals win this Oceania Championship Series for 2013. And more importantly than that, Narelle, they qualify for next year's World Championships in Turkey.